if ever there is one driver which can propel our county to full-scale develop status, then it is through quality skills training. On that front, the Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training, COTVET, through a skills development fund, is spearheading that agenda in Ghana. Who is going to provide the service? And our main focus has been on mass production of garments. There was a lot of talk about Sakawa. Are you able to use these same processes to also apprehend people? That, that is correct. Ghana. Our research showed that Ghana was at the number eight in the world when it comes to cyber crime. On this program, we shall open up the SDF to you. So SDF is here to support businesses to train their staff to be very productive. All that we're trying to do is to build a very solid human capital base. We shall profile beneficiaries of SDF. We are now even positioned to train about 400 workers. We gave them uh, 276,000 US dollars. There is a fund from which we are giving grants to businesses to address these challenges. You, you develop these Moringa plants into, into products like soap, creams, okay. My name is Albert Ankara and I bring you SDF Diaries. Make a date with me on GTV. SDF is an initiative of the Government of Ghana with support from the World Bank and Danida. SDF is a project by Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training in Ghana. They've been supporting a number of uh, institutions and entities in the country for some time now. Today, we want to laser beam on one of their success stories. And uh, I have in my studios the Managing Director of Sleek Garments. Sleek Garments. And she will introduce us. Hello, Nora. Hi. Welcome. Thank to you. The Skills Development Fund, SDF, is an important tool in the creation and sustainability of a knowledgeable and skilled workforce that will support not only the growth of existing businesses, but the addition of new high-wage industries. It is a challenge fund providing a demand-driven response to three critical challenges encountered by the productive sectors of Ghana, an adequately qualified labor force the agency of training institutions providing up-to-date skills training and access to state-of-the-art technology. The SDF caters to the skills needs of the formal and informal sectors of the economy. It will be available for pre-employment initiatives and address the needs of continual skills upgrading. The fund will also support partnerships between science and technology providers and industry targeting productivity improvement product diversification and growth through technology development and organizational innovations. And you put it on the fabric, we lay it maybe 200, 2000, whatever. Yeah, so after that, then we cut it. And this is medium and the large. So this is our pattern. And before you do that, we measure the pattern and you see the, whether it's two yards or three yards.
school. I've been with this garment for three years. And when I came, I came as a swing dress. But as I'm so good, some uh, time went on. I've been trained as a quality supervisor. So now I know the difference between just sewing and main dress and quality. company is a beneficiary of SDF and today I want to find out what attracted SDF to support her company. Welcome back to SDF Diaries. Atu, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, welcome to you, Nora. Thanks. Nora is MD of Sleek Garments Limited. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Right, so let's find out from you, Nora. How, what really was Sleek set up to do? Uh, Sleek is set up to mass produce clothing. Uh, for export mainly and then about 30% for the local market and we produce all kinds of garments including uniforms okay. right so let's come to uh, Mr. Simpson what what caught SDF's attention about Sleek's proposal well um, the proposal from Sleek was well thought through you could see from beginning to end that it was the manager sat down to think through the real needs of the company and you can see the genuineness of the application that the, 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 the beneficiary um, trainees had a real need for example you know, currently in Ghana an average Ghana producer would do 10 shirts a day but in China you could do 30 a day and hers was to move from that 4 to about say 20 and you could see that this training that you required could actually move them from the current four to even if it's not 20 to about 15, be very happy with it. So that tremendous improvement in productivity was exciting. Mm -hmm. We felt that if you could put in some grant mm -hmm. to support her business, uh, that could go a long way to make her more competitive, actually, to be able to export mm -hmm. to markets abroad. Mm -hmm. And of course, in addition to the fact that everybody also wears clothes, you can just imagine what the world would be without clothes. So exactly. let me come back to you, um, Nora. What was the situation like, uh, I mean, with Sleek before the SDF intervention? As I too rightly pointed out, you know, the Ghanaian workers' capacity or output per day is much, much lower than what other workers out of China are producing. Mm. And we are operating on the international markets. And the market prices are dictated by those who have been on the markets for a longer time. And China and Bangladesh, Cambodia, they've always been out there. And they dictate a certain price, let's say per shirt. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to produce up to 30 shirts a day, uh, per uh, worker per day, mm -hmm. then that is how they would price. And if we are underproducing, if we're producing like four to five shirts per day, we're already making a loss if mm -hmm. we're competing for the same markets. You know, so we needed to overcome that challenge because there's no way, a buyer will tell you, there's no way they're going to pay you a factory for your inefficiencies. That's what they call it. Because if any worker anywhere in this world can make 30 shirts per day, they're expecting the Ghanaian worker to be able to produce about the same. So uh, we needed to overcome this. And uh, we, as a, a factory, you know, Slee Garments Export Limited, has invested so much in equipment, you know, certain specialized equipment, 
to produce for the international market, which is a good thing, because such a factory can give employment to not less than a thousand workers. So we needed to overcome this situation, and we do not have the skilled workers, workers with those skills. And yet, Ghana has become very attractive to the international market for garments. You know, because we are a peaceful nation, and we are also very creative. And if we set our minds to it, and we have the right skills, we should be able to produce with the quality that we have at the speed that the international market requires. And this is where we needed SDF to support us, because it costs money to train people. You have to invest that money in before you can have a serious business that is attractive to a buyer. Mm. So SDF took that load of tra you know, training personnel off training of you. Okay. Yes. Right, I'm just coming really to, to, to ask him how much they gave uh, sleep garments. Well, I think we gave sleep garments um, 590,000 Ghana cities. Okay. Um, it's a six months training, and so it, it required a lot of um, work getting these uh, employees to upgrade from four shirts per day, for example, to say 20. Mm -hmm. That takes so much work and working them through. So we approved that amount of money for sleep, and we're confident that mm -hmm. by the end of the six months, they will be able to, to get their workers to do the speed that they require. If ever there is one driver which can propel our country to full-scale developed status, then it is through quality skills training. On that front, the Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training, Quadvet, through a skills development fund, is spearheading that agenda in Ghana. Who is going to provide mm -hmm. a service? And our main focus has been on mass production of garments. There was a lot of talk about Sakawa. Are you able to use these same processes to also apprehend people? That, that is correct. Ghana? Our research showed that Ghana was at the number eight in the world when it comes to cyber crime. On this program, we shall open up the SDF to you. Yeah, so SDF is here to support businesses to train their staff to be very productive. All that we're trying to do is to build a very solid human capital base. We shall profile beneficiaries of SDF. We are now even positioned to train about 400 workers. We gave them uh, 276,000 US dollars. There is a fund from which we are giving grants to businesses to address these challenges. You, you develop these Moringa plants into, into products like soap, cream, okay. My name is Albert Ankara and I bring you SDF Diaries. Make a date with me on GTV. SDF is an initiative of the Government of Ghana with support from the World Bank and Danida. Miss Nora Bannerman, what, when did did, did sleep start? What, 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 what culminated in the start of sleep? Well, I could take us all back to the 70s. Um, years before then, you know, fashion, designing and making clothing had been a, ho a hobby of mine. And then in 79, I decided to make that a side business, a little cottage business. And uh, I went into doing local shows and producing garments for people. And it was getting bigger and more successful. So I set up a business. It was a sole proprietorship, and then it was limited liability. And I registered it as limited liability in 94. And uh, in 94, you know, we had, uh, through the Ghana Export Promotion Council, we had uh, buyers coming to the country. And uh, through that, I exported about 10,000 garments to the U.S. But at the time, I didn't have a big enough factory. So I had to subcontract to other factories who had various challenges. And the challenges were so much that I was completely put off. But sometime in the 2000, you know, into 2000, I was a member of the AGOA subcommittee. And then Ghana got its AGOA visa. And uh, the government decided that garments was an area where a lot of jobs could be created for Ghanaians, as well as the economy could be grown through the garment industry. So I was invited to be a part of the program because of my experience or my company's experience in exporting to the U.S. previously. And that's how we started off. And uh, we got a bit of training for the entrepreneurs as well as for the machinists and operators and so on. And I went into Sri Lanka to employ, employ um, technical persons mm -hmm. 
who had experience. You know, Sri Lanka has a lot of experience in garment manufacturing and exports and so on for so many years. They've been very successful. So I brought them into the country and we, we started off, you know, with Sri Garments Export Limited. We registered it in 2002. And our main focus has been on mass production of garments mm -hmm. to the U.S. market, especially under Agoa. Because Agua is duty and quota free. Okay. You know, so okay. So that's, that's how that's how sleek. So at the time you started sleek, how many employees did you have? Uh, we had under thirty. Under thirty. Even though we had a, a small training institute that would take on another thirty trainees, mm. and those who passed out, some would choose to work with us. But we never had more than thirty workers. Mm. At most, uh, at most times, about yeah. twenty workers. Okay. Yeah. So SDF decided to support.